Just like the bird who feels the sun and sings before the dawn has come. Have faith, have faith. Yeah, yeah. Slowly, slow, my child, the world waits for you. And your window of time will come shining through. Slowly, slow, don't rush, you know, it'll all come easy. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In alhamdulillahi nahmaduhu nasta'inuhu nasta'gfiruhu. Wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyiati amalina. Wa yahdillahu falamudilla lahu wa yudlil falahadiya lahu. Wa ashahadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashahadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasulu wa'd. Allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ala ala muhammad wa baraka ala muhammadin wa ala ala muhammad. Kama salli tabarakta ala ibrahim wa ala ibrahim inna ka hamidu majid. Respected viewers, brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode in this path of ours to journey. Journeying to reach the eternal goal of every human being, happiness in this world and the hereafter. We are discussing in these episodes of ours the useful ways or the beneficial means in achieving happiness. In the last episode, we mentioned how doing good to others is actually doing good to yourself. When you do good to others, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does good to you. And we discuss the, the, the various ways of doing good. Especially we mentioned, we pointed, out the point, we pointed out being good and tying the relationships with your relatives. The Sheikh then continues to say, chapter 2. And these are all connected. Again, I remind you. When we begin, we mention this. Every episode is connected to the, to the other. It's not separate. So once you have the previous episode, it's like a continuation. This is the next, con this is the next step. Then the coming episode, inshallah, that's the next step to happiness. And like that. He says, Among the means of warding off anxieties, arising out of nervousness and the preoccupation of the heart, with some sorrowful things, is occupying oneself with one activity or another, or with some useful knowledge. From the means where you push away stress or the anxiety you're suffering from, the worries, the grief you have, the sadness you have, from the ways you cure that and you treat that so that you can attain the happy life you want, is to involve yourself and to occupy yourself with an activity, especially useful knowledge. He says, this is because doing that will distract the heart away from being immersed in its anxieties. The human being is like that. You either focus on this or on that. So you take away the focus of your heart from those problems. Occupy yourself with something else. He says, it may even make him forget the things that caused him, him grief and worry. Yes, it reaches to that point. And I think if you have tried it, you'll say, yes, it works. Can we even make you forget it, completely forget? Then he says, and he may even experience some happiness and become cheerful. This is also something that is common between both the believer and the non-believer. Both the believer and the, be the non-believer if they are suffering from some sadness or anxiety or grief or, or sorrow, if they occupy themselves with some beneficial activity, it takes them away from that sorrow, that sadness they are suffering. This is true. But the believer is different because when he occupies himself with the knowledge that he is seeking or giving, all the good action he is doing, whether it be an act of worship or a worldly act which he has a good intention of doing it to seek strength in worshipping Allah, when he does that, he does it out of his belief in Allah. Sincerity 
with Allah and seeking the pleasure of Allah. This in itself has additional effect of warding off grief, worries and anxieties by a divine intervention. He says, we have seen so many people afflicted with worries, sorrow and permanent anxieties to the extent of making them very ill. Their only cure was to make them forget the cause of their sorrow and misery, just to take them away and be preoccupied with their normal activities. The activity to be preoccupied with should be something pleasing to the self and the one that yearns for. This makes it more effective in achieving the desired goal and all knowledge is with Allah. This is point number three from the book of the Sheikh. As you see, he emphasizes that one should preoccupy himself or occupy himself with something else. Don't just sit and start to think of whatever's happening to you and let it get into your head and you're so immersed in those uh, 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 anxieties and, and, and worries and sadness so that this is the cause you bring to yourself stress. You stress yourself. The Muslim is supposed to do whatever he can to occupy himself with something else. Whatever has happened has happened. Alhamdulillah. Be patient. Do good to others. Have that iman. Move on. Don't just sit and wait for destruction. That's not how the Muslim acts. The Muslim, he occupies himself with so much. To the extent, the Sheikh says, this makes you forget even what you're suffering. Or even to, an, to a better extent, it even makes you more happier than you are. And this is something which is tested, proven. I for myself, I can speak for myself, Alhamdulillah, it works. Do an activity. Don't just sit and start thinking of the problems you have. And you're immersed in them. Because that's when you open the door for shaitan. Some of the activities you can do, as you have seen, the sheikh, he emphasizes and he signifies what? Knowledge. Seeking knowledge. Whether it is seeking it, or it is also spreading it, teaching it. That's one of the best activities you can ever do. Especially, he then says, if you do it for the sake of Allah, to earn the pleasure of Allah, this gives you divine intervention. Allah looks at you and says, look at my slave. He is doing this for me. He wants to take off the stress he wants. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps you. Some of the activities you can do, just to mention a few. Involve yourself in sporting activities. Go play football. Go play basketball. As long as it's in a proper setting, there's nothing haram being done. Islam does not say no. Go have some fun. Another activity you can do, do some charity work. And this is a point related to the last point in the last episode you mentioned. Doing good to others. Involve yourself in a charity organization. Whether it is practically on the field helping others or in, in uh, uh, managerial uh, uh, activities where you have to do some paperwork or whatever. Involve yourself in positive activities. Clean up of the city. Or a marathon, let's say a walk to help uh, cancer victims. Involve yourself in these actions. And this takes away your grief. Takes away your sorrow. The Sheikh pointed out again, I'm saying, on knowledge. Because there's a secret behind this. So a huge, huge secret behind this. Very, very important. Why did he say involve yourself in knowledge? I myself, I can answer by saying, if you had knowledge, it is very, very rare for you to be in the situation like this person the Sheikh is talking about, where he just sits at home and he just clenches his beard or his head and he's just uh, staring at the, at the floor or the wall thinking, oh, my life is done, I'm lost, I'm distracted. Nah. If you have knowledge, you never do that. Because you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there. If you have knowledge, simply putting it, if you have knowledge, you'll understand all these episodes we have gone through and all that is to come.
And even if you are to watch this, uh, a series of hours will just be a, a reminder to you. Knowledge is the key to success. Knowledge is the key to power. Knowledge is the key to eternal happiness. Just to give you a simple hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, he says, and this, again, it's a connection between this episode of ours and the previous episode, which he talked about the positive effect of doing good to others. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, مَنْ نَفَّسَ عَنْ مُؤْمِنٍ قُرْبَةٌ مِنْ قُرَبِ الدُّنْيَا نَفَّسَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ قُرْبَةً مِنْ قُرْبَ يَوْمِ الْآخِيَةِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ The one who relieves a believer of his hardship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will relieve his hardships on the day of Qiyamah. You do good to others. Somebody is undergoing trouble, you, you help him, you save him. Allah will save you, Allah will help you. وَمَنْ سَدَرَ مُسْلِمًا سَدَرَهُ اللَّهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ And the one who covers a Muslim, he's, no, you know, he's, a, he's a well known Muslim, he's a good Muslim, but he just fell into a mistake. Then cover him. Don't start talking about him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cover your mistakes in this dunya and the akhir. A happy life here and in the akhir. وَمَنْ يَسَّرَ عَلَى مُعْسِرٍ يَسَّرَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ And the one who relieves and gives ease to the person who has a debt, the person whose loan is so much money to pay for, Allah will, will ease your life in this dunya and the akhir. You'll have a happy life. You're helping others. وَاللَّهُ فِي عَوْنِ الْعَبْدِ مَا كَانَ الْعَبْدُ فِي عَوْنِ أَخِيهِ Allah will continue and not cease to help you to take care of your affairs as long as you help others. وَمَنْ سَلَكَ طَرِيقًا يَلْتَمِسُ فِيهِ عِلْمًا سَهَّلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ بِهِ طَرِيقًا إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ And the one who traverses the path, he wants to seek knowledge, Allah will make ease for him the path to Jannah. It's very, very important. The connection between knowledge and doing good and happiness. وَمَجْتَمَعَ قَوْمٌ فِي بَيْتٍ مِنْ بُيُوتِ اللَّهِ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ وَيَتَدَرَسُونَهُ بَيْنَهُمْ إِلَّا حَفَّتْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ وَنَزْلَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّكِينَةِ وَغَشْيَهُمُ الرَّحْمَةِ This is the most important part of this hadith. After the break, inshallah, I shall translate it for you and show you the benefits. Slowly, slow, don't rush, you know, it'll all come easy. The words of Allah, the Qur'an, sent to us by the Almighty, so we can hear and obey. We cannot live our life without the Holy Qur'an. You must listen carefully to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because your safety and my safety will be with this great verses, verses of the Holy Qur'an. We are here in this world for a test, and this test and you will have questions in the Day of Judgment. Hear and obey with Sheikh Rifat Muhammad in Ramadan only on Huda TV. Welcome back in another episode of Our Path to Happiness. We were speaking before the break on this great hadith. And the point of this episode is that part or, a, or one of the means of giving you a happy life is for you to occupy yourself with a positive or a, a good activity. Instead of you just sitting there, locking yourself at home, and start to, start to stress yourself out, no. Occupy yourself with something positive. Do something beneficial. And you mentioned some of the things you can do. But the Sheikh pointed out knowledge. 
And I read out this part of this hadith, the one who helps others, Allah will help him. Then Allah, then the Prophet وسلم, he says, وَمَجْتَمَعَ قَوْمُ الْفَيْبَيْتِ مِنْ بُيُوتِ اللَّهِ يَتَدَرَسُونَهُ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ يَتَدَرَسُونَهُ بَيْنَهُمْ Any people who gather together in a masjid, reading the book of Allah and studying it between them, when you sit in a lecture or a halakah in the masjid, what happens? حَفَّتْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ The angels, they come down and they surround you. وَنَزْرَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّكِينَةِ And tranquility. It comes down, Allah gives it tranquility. وَغَشْيَتْهُمُ الرَّحْمَةِ And mercy engulfs them. وَذَكَرَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنْ عِنْدَهُ And Allah mentions these people to the close angels who are close to Allah. Subhanallah. All of these benefits, cause of knowledge, yes, cause of knowledge, seeking knowledge. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, my dear brother and sister, مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ The one whom Allah wants good for him, then he makes him knowledgeable in the religion. Knowledgeable in the religion, that he starts to know his deen very well. It's a very good sign, it's a positive sign that you are upon good and that you are upon the path of attaining happiness. Why do you think the Prophet ﷺ, he says to all of us, طَلَوَ الْعِلْمُ فَرِيضَةٌ عَلَى كُلِّ مُسْلِمْ Seeking knowledge is a must on every Muslim. It's an obligation. Because that's the path you'll attain happiness. From the points we mentioned before in the previous episodes, is having correct belief, doing righteous actions, knowing how to deal with the tests. All of that, it is born out of wisdom, out of knowledge, ilm. Without ilm, you, can be no, you, can, you can't do that. You can't know how to worship Allah. You don't know the sweetness of iman. You don't know how to deal with trials. Seeking knowledge is a must for everybody. And it's, uh, it's, it's a fact, I, I myself, I, I attest to that. When you start seeking knowledge, Allah, you forget about all your problems. All your problems, you forget them. Another point where seeking knowledge is beneficial and is rightly connected to this issue of ours, this matter of ours which we are seeking, the happiness in life. One day, one of the Sahaba, he came to the Prophet Wasallam, And he says, Ya Rasulullah, this brother of mine, his brother was with the Prophet Wasallam. He just seeks knowledge. And I do all the work. I'm the one who earns the bread for the, for the, for the, for the family. It's like he's complaining, yeah. So the Prophet Wasallam he says to him, and how do you know? Maybe Allah gives you the rizq because of him. Subhanallah. Allah gives you that money. Allah gives you that richness because of your brother seeking knowledge. He's doing something very good. So he's doing his obliga a part of the obligation and do you do part of that obligation. Allah gives you risk maybe because of him. That's why you say Umar ibn Khattab, he says, I used to have my neighbor from the Ansar. One day I go to work and my neighbor goes to the Prophet Sallam to learn. In the evening when I come back, he explains to me all that which he learned that day from the Prophet Sallam. Tomorrow I'm the one who goes to the Prophet Sallam, Umar says, and my neighbor goes to work. Have time for knowledge. Yes, work and you have to you have to have an earning, you have to pay rent, you have to have food. Of course. Islam does not say just sit. But create time for learning. Create time for seeking knowledge. If you're in a, in a place where there's no halakas in the masjid or no Islamic uh, uh, centers or universities, then this is one of the best way right here. This is a ni'mah from Allah that you have a TV channel like Al Huda where you can learn positive knowledge. Occupy yourself with this. And this brings us back to the point we're talking about. When the Sheikh says, instead of just sitting and thinking of your stress and your worries, occupy yourself with something good. Some people, they occupy themselves with TV and movies and music. That's not what it's meant. Occupy yourself with something positive. 
let it be beneficial TV like this. If you can get CDs of some lectures of positive documentaries where you get, you get knowledge of anything, that is better. Not wasting time. The Shaykh mentioned seeking knowledge and teaching knowledge. As for teaching knowledge, the benefit of it, the Prophet ﷺ, he says, Fadlu al-Alim, the excellence of a alim, somebody who is knowledgeable. Al al abid somebody who just worships, he does not have knowledge. Kafadli ana ala adnakum, it's like me compared to those who are lowest of you. The Prophet to those who are lowest. That's where the scholars are. Wa inna al malaikat, and and of course, surely the malaika. And the fish in the ocean, and whatever is on earth, la yusalluna ala muallim al nas khair. They ask du'a, they make du'a to Allah to give good to the person who teaches others. Subhanallah. Imagine all the creation, they're making du'a for you because you teach others good knowledge. See, something you should strive for. Something which will give you a happy life. And Allah, there's no better feeling than when you know that you're benefiting people. Another benefit of teaching people. The Prophet ﷺ says, "Adar ala khair kamithli fa'ilih." The one who teaches somebody else to do good. Example: I teach you to pray to the salah, or I teach you how to read the surah of the Quran. When you do that, of course, you earn good rewards. When you earn good rewards, I, being your teacher, I also earn the same thing without reducing from your rewards. So teach people, earn so much reward, spread good. Be a person who does good to others. On the importance of knowledge, maybe I share a story with you. One day Abu Hurairah, the after the Prophet passed away, this, he's walking in Medina. And he passes by some of the young men who are sitting, just chatting, wasting time. And he says to them, Mirathu Nabi yuqsamu fil masjid. وَأَنْتُمْ هُنَا The inheritance, the wealth the Prophet ﷺ left, the money he left, is being divided, is being given out in the masjid. You are sitting here? So what happens? They all run to the masjid, hoping to have that wealth. When they go there, they see nothing. And Abu Hurairah is waiting for them. So they come back. And he said, Ya Abu Hurairah, we went there and we didn't see anything. There's no worth being divided. There's no worth being given out. So he says to them, what did you see? They say, قَوْمٌ يَقْرَأُونَ الْقُرْآنِ وَقَوْمٌ يَذْكُرُونَ الْحَلَالُ الْحَرَامِ He says, we saw people sitting reading Quran, a people sitting, teaching each other the halal and the haram, and a people seeking, يَتْلِبُونَ الْعِمْ Seeking knowledge. So Abu Huraira, he says to them, that is the inheritance of the Prophet ﷺ. Because the Prophets, Lam yurith dinar or dirham, they don't leave behind dinars or dirhams or dollars or, or guineas or pounds or whatever. But they leave behind knowledge. So those people are taking the inheritance of the Prophet ﷺ. That's the importance of knowledge. Another thing which shows you how important knowledge is, that it's something which gains you that feeling of knowing that you know what you do. When you're knowledgeable, you know what you do. You're doing something upon knowledge. It's not like something is strange to you. Secondly, again on this point, it brings you close to Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, my dear brothers and sisters, هَلْ يَسْتَوِ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Can they be equal, those who know, those who have knowledge, and those who don't have knowledge? They can never be equal. Never. Remember the first two points we mentioned? In the first two episodes, the best way and the 
the, the foundational way of achieving happiness is Iman and righteous actions. You have to have the fear of Allah and worship Him properly. Then listen to this. Allah says, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاء Those who really have the fear of Allah, those who have the proper way of fearing and worshiping Allah, are those who have knowledge, the scholars. Be a scholar. Strive for knowledge. This is your path to happiness. Again, occupy yourself with something positive and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take away that stress you have and give you happiness. Inshallah, until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Just like the bird who feels the sun and sings before the dawn has come. Have faith, have faith. Yeah, yeah. Slowly, slow, my child, the world waits for you. Just like the bird who feels the sun and sings before the dawn has come. Have faith, have faith. Yeah, yeah. Slowly, slow, my child, the world waits for you. And your window of time will come shining through. Slowly, slow, don't rush, you know, it'll all come easy.